Let's sneak away from the group instead of visiting the glass workers. This tour offers only those aspects of Brabazon deemed suitable for tourists. To see anything real of the place, you're going to have to explore unsupervised. The guides are focused on moving the tour along. No one notices you slipping away down an alley. Here we go, explore the true Babazon, port report, supplement the workers' meager rations, rejoin the tour. Right, I'm still limited by time. The shanties are pressed close together. There are no more streets, only cramped alleys. Their few windows are clogged with filth. Grimy workers trudge from work to home, eating as they go. Time is precious here. Minutes not spent at work are given to sleep. Straight report report. Industry is booming here, as always. Labor is cheap. Demand is high. Discontent simmers among the workers, but the ones who prove valuable are promoted to oversight positions. The wheels turn. Brabazon persists. I've used nearly half my time. Let's explore the true Babazon. Babazon? Brabazon. You're backstage now. The lights and the props and the sham of the tour are left behind. Dismal, smog-choked alleyways. Sooty tenements with tiny windows. Occasionally there's laughter from within them. There's almost always laughter, even in the grimmest of places. But it is very infrequent here and dies quickly. Gain five terror. Ooh. Provide fuel for warmth or secure a worker medical attention. That sounds important. I mean, both are important. Mm. In some parts of Brabazon, further from the factories, the smog is cold and hangs dirty icicles from the gutters. The people that live there huddle in patched cloaks and threadbare blankets. Right, they said because the smog blocks the sun, they need all the factories producing heat, basically. To warm people. But some people are a bit further away than others. Mm. Let's secure worker medical attention. A worker has been injured in a factory accident. A common occurrence. So common that she can't be seen until the doctor next visits. More urgent care could be invoked if you have the necessary paperwork. Trade a ministry stamp permit for ministry approved literature. I mean, it's not really a good trade, but... I just want to help someone get medical attention? The doctor's call books, safely secured in his office in the bit between, claims he visits Brabazon twice a week, or once over the Christmas and Easter periods. But from the perspective of the workworlders, isolated, isolated in their envelope of frantic scurrying hours, the gap between his visits is rather longer. The debtors complain bitterly about the arrangement. You arrange a precious visit to the doctor's surgery for the injured worker. Colleagues and family, desperate to show their gratitude, give you whatever they can spare. That turns out to be Bibles, of the Ministry of Public Decency's newest and most improved edition. You've been kind to the workers of Brabazon Workworld. I've used up more than half my time. Brabazon is at peace. Workers respect their lot in life. They shouldn't. So, like, that's where the governor wants them to be. Just sort of content, but, you know, no ambitions to, uh, spark revolution, I guess, amongst the work world. Let's provide fuel for warmth. Trade fuel for a sky story. Coal in the hearth, fire in the grate, stiff fingers spread out before the flames. Families draw close around the heat. It's quicker to work off a debt as a family, and neighbors too. Stories are told, mostly stories of how things could be better. Your good deeds are not going unwatched. So if I help them enough, maybe we'll be able to speak with the leader. That wants to... Help them revolt. <laughs> if 
Families draw close around the heats, quicker to work off a debt as a family. So is that... Does that mean people trying to help out one of their family members who was sentenced to come here and they're willingly coming here just to help them escape? Or was it like the whole family did something and they got them all in trouble, but it's better to stay together? Game Disguise Story. Supplement the workers' meager rations. With some supplies you've smuggled from your engine. The locals have grown so used to gruel that even Murgatroyd's fungal crackers come as an exotic extravagance to them. You share what you have with as many as you can. Fuller bellies means more strength with which to agitate for better conditions. You are rapidly running out of time. Okay, I should probably go. Provide books to a school. God, there's so much I can do. Uh, give charity. Wow, I have a real bad chance at this. Um, but yeah, we can't stay. We're joining the tour. You still have time to get back. Someone has marked every corner with chalk. The arrows point towards the Brabazon tour route. Here and there, the markings have been covered over with soot, but it's easy enough to get back. Whoever the marker was, they were anxious not to get stuck here. Finish the tour. Alright, let's go back. Yeah, I don't know if using a ministry stamp permit there did anything different. Doesn't feel like it. So, I don't know. Let's go in with uh, Savage Secret. The overseer listens intently to what you have to say. Hmm. Useful, I think. We shall see what, we can, what can be done with it. She directs you to a group by the tour leader who shepherds you all into a side room. Carriage clock, thank you. Admire the rugs. The only thing I can do. Wait. Wait, I admire the rugs and then I can admire them again or smile at the workers? That's weird. Smile, sneak away from the group. And we're back. Provide books to a school. Brabazon's Board of Governors prescribes a very narrow reading list that may be taught in the work world's classrooms. Ooh, your kindness has drawn the attention of a leader of the Brabazon workers. Hell yeah. The children fall upon anything that's new. Their old book of morally appropriate fairy tales has been read so much that its pages are now fragile as tissues. You spend an hour watching them read the new works, which mostly consist of sermons, wildly misunderstand them, and swap imaginative interpretations of what they mean. Meet with the workers' leader, yes. I could also bribe an overseer to spare the birch. Oh my god, a debtor has been accused of thievery and indolence. He is to be birched as an example to others. Perhaps the overseer could be convinced to go easy on him. As in like... Like with a birch branch? Uh, whipped? I think? Yeah. That's a thing too. Meet with the workers later. A faintly bearded youth sidles up to you. Our gov wants a word. The youth ushers you past his exhausted peers into a two-story brick house. Its doorway is lit with a red lamp. A wiry, ginger-haired man grins at you over a desk littered with documents. Some are crisscrossed with scrawled notes, others are pristine and freshly inked. The faintly bearded youth has a beatific smile. Our leader, the reverberant activist, saw your work. He said you might be able to help. Of course. Let's talk to them. We've heard of your generosity. He pumps your hand. His grin is wry. And as we know, the reward for generosity is to be asked to be more generous still. That's fine. You've seen the conditions here. 
This is the lot of the unfortunate, not the deserving. Brabazon is at peace. Workers respect their lot in life, but they shouldn't. I want you to help us fight back and secure better conditions for everyone who is sent here. He pats the faintly bearded youth on the back. We have the will and the strength, but lack something you have in abundance. Freedom. We need provisions and materials. We need someone who can smuggle them in. One of the overseers in the bit between believes in the cause. He describes the overseer to you. They will help you in and out. Sounds great. Ask how you can assist the worker's struggle. The leader asks for your help. How can you assist? Some of the workers at Brabazon are fighting for better conditions and require materials from off-world to aid their efforts. Provide blackmail material for the cause? Oh, I can do that. There's time. Some savage secrets. Supply tea for the cause? <laughs> Well, can't do that right now, so let's provide blackmail material. The reverberant activist listens closely to the information you bring him. His eyebrows rise. Or raise, rather. Yes. Yes, this I can use. Unrest is low. The overseers need do little to control the workers. I'm rapidly running out of time. Shit. I now have one information about an uprising. Uh, okay, we need to go speak of other matters, so we'll have to wait for now. Um, anxious, the reverberant activist points at your carriage clock. Comrade, you have to leave. Return when you have more time. Return to the bit between. The faintly bearded youth accompanies you. A tour is about to leave. We will conceal you amongst them. The plan is simple and goes smoothly. Soon you emerge with another chattering tour of benefactors into the bit between. Okay. Let's go back in. Give me that carriage clock. Admire those shitty rugs. Actually, I don't think they're actually shitty, but just admire those fucking rugs. I don't care about them. Smile at the workers that don't care about me, because why would they? Sneak away. Meet with them. Ask how we can help. Man, all of this takes time. Let's provide more blackmail material. There are murmurs of discontent among the workers, but only that. I guess I'm just going to be providing them a shit ton of blackmail material. <laughs> the workers are unhappy. They'll follow anyone who promises to change their lot in life. Ugh, I'm rapidly running out of time. Do I already have to leave? Do I only have a chance to do two things here? Supply permits for the cause. Okay, we can do something else. Or Chorister Nectar. Well, I can do permits, but I need to go. Return to the bit between. And I'll be back in a second. I'm going to close all this and redock and what have you, because it's getting super laggy from all the text that have built up all of this. There's <laughs> a lot. Okay, back to helping them. Supply permits for the cause. The faintly bearded youth passes a sheet of paper to the reverberant activist. Top of the list is a minister stamp permit. There's no way I can get my hands on one. Ideal. We have to get into Little Nice. This may allow us to do so. There are some overseers I used to know who got promoted out of reach. But they owe me, and I'll be able to remind them of the debt. The leader grins again, fiercely. His youthful assistance... Assistant quails, but says nothing. The workers strike and suffer for it. They are undeterred. Change must come. Yes. 
Yeah, how about this overseer? The insider overseer that supports their cause. Can I go find them? Should I go find them? Provide them with materials? Well, while I'm here, let's give them another permit. The Bravislin workers are up in arms. Ooh, all is prepared. We have everything we need, you're told. Come. Uh, that's the same description as before. Yeah, just the description of the, the activist. But this is new, of course. The uprising is beginning. The reverberant activist is agitated, pacing anxiously. Come, quickly. Our plans are prepared and our patience is gone. It's time. It begins. He leads you downstairs. Listen. From all around you hear shouts and chanting. The song of revolution is inharmonious, but it is passionate. Thank you, comrade, for all that you've done. He points in the direction of the bit between. Now go, for your own safety. I'll see you again when this is settled. It's time we had a word with the governor. Workers cheer as you pass. The heavy double doors to the tunnel burst open before you. The sympathetic overseer rushes forwards to lead you away and hears the shouts from the work world. O? Oh? I'm, I'm not sure what the O oh means. Are they surprised? Like, oh, <laughs> it's happening. Unrest is high enough for an uprising. Bravos and work world is up in arms. Okay, they said leave, but like, I don't want to. I want to help. I feel like before I do this, it might be a good idea to buy some of these munitions that are, you know, the bargain. There might be some skill checks. Yeah. Industrial unrest. Workers burst through into the bit between from the work world. Overseers run in both directions, some fleeing, some throwing themselves into the melee. Investigate what's happening. It seems quiet, now's the time to discover what has occurred. An overseer bustles you to your locomotive. Is it the revolutionary leader's ally? Workers rush between you before you can be sure. He shouts over the crowd. You have to leave. Come back in. Oh, I don't know. Come back in a few days. When this is all over, one way or another. It's not clear what he reads in your face, but he presses his point. This is between us workworlders. We have to resolve it. You've done your bit. You'll be unable to do anything at the port till the situation is resolved. Okay. Should I ask the anxious overseer what's going on again? <laughs> uh, he's signaling to locomotives, discouraging them from docking. Visitors that were already at the port are being encouraged firmly to leave. Nothing to be concerned about. A small revolt instigated by a fanatical group of revolutionaries. No doubt it will peter out soon. But while the situation is being resolved, we will be closing the port. Return in a week when the unrest should be resolved. Man, I hope the workers win. Hope we don't come back to something real bad. A week. Okay. I'm nervous. Cautiously optimistic. Nervous. Hope this turns out well. Where do I go now? I guess back to London? Dump off all my stuff? Hmm, actually, hold on. Before I go anywhere, we have enough port reports to continue the signalman's quest. Yes, ask about his opinion of Albion. You've traveled across the region together. Has he seen enough? The signalman pauses in transcribing his latest set of notes. They cover the signals of Albion from the bat-delivered memos of Parliament to the archaic systems of the Home Office. His manuscript grows ever heftier. It's not the world we thought we were building. Looks a lot like the old one for a start. But... Wh I, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to say that. The wh brighter gleams? Wh I'm not sure what that's trying to say. Um, we're all afraid to let go of what was. Speaking of, 
and we next stop at London, I'd like to take shore leave. It's time I spoke to the squire. Who is that, you ask? A purveyor of follies, he responds, obliquely. <laughs> okay. Sigmund wants to visit a quixotic squire near the Ministry of Public Decency in London. Oh, well, perfect. I'm going there right now. What? What? The X is, like, stuck pressed like it's doing it, but it's not? No, it definitely wasn't. Now it works. Well, I guess there's nothing unexplored along the way to London, so... I'll bring you back when I'm at London. Damn, two dreadnoughts. I think there was another enemy that started to see me over there, too. Check the navigation suite. Ministry stamp permit. Been using a lot of those. Unlicensed chart. Ministry stamp permit. Okay, so what was seeing me over here? Oh, yeah, another dreadnought. Oh no, I clicked the bottom one because that's, in the past, that's what's been the uh, unlicensed chart thing, but I just got some supplies. Alright. Unfortunate occurrence. Right, we had the egg. What's happened with it? Mm. Laying in the hold, surrounded by fragments of eggshell, is a very small, very dead cantankery. Its legs are curled up underneath it, hugging its carapace. Every reported encounter with these beastly critters describes them as aggressive, as frothing with frustration. There is no similarity here. The way the mandibles rest on the face of this one is almost serene. Perhaps in its final moments it finally found peace. Perhaps it's the shock of that novel experience that killed it outright. <laughs> That's a really cool little experience. That's new. My god, there's a lot of enemies around here. really seem to spin out to another dimension pretty often. 
Cover glass not worth it. Let's find random treasures. Masked, or marked a box. Pane of stained glass. And what's this? Fuel. Can't believe how busy the area around London is with enemies. Three dreadnoughts, and then that glass ship. Back at London, just repaired the ship and recruited two more crew, so now I'm up to 19 out of 19. Let's also deliver all my port reports to the Stellar Bookkeeper. No reason to keep them now. I think I've got five, right? Yeah. Total of 20 gratitude, which I should probably turn in for some stuff, huh? Like, I'm good on savage secrets. What about an unlicensed chart? I have seven of those in total now. Oh, that costs six gratitude. Holy shit. Yeah, maybe let's not do that again. Two gratitude to get a savage secret. How many savage secrets do I have? 21 now. I'll get a couple. I'm not low, but... It's not like the gratitude's doing any good just sitting here. Eight gratitude left. That's fine. Okay. Let's get the signal in shore leave. To explore London and then... Yeah. Seek an audience with Queen Victoria. Just need a royal dispensation. Easy peasy. Allow the segment to curry favor with London's elites. Uh... Did they want me to do anything specific? None of these mention the quest. Should I try to find a cryptic benefactor again and maybe they'll just do their thing? Uh, maybe I need to speak with them directly. Oh, right, they're not aboard my ship anymore. Okay, cryptic benefactor. I'm almost back at Brabazon Workworld, and it's been a little bit more than a week, so we should see the result of the revolution. I went ahead and did the thing that I've mentioned wanting to do, where my hold is so big that I just take a, a smattering of pretty commonly needed things. A little bit of nectar and hours and tea and munitions and uh, crockery I actually just found as a, a thing out in space. I wasn't going to take that. Stained glass, some literature, and immaculate souls. Please be good, please be good, please be good. Industrial unrest, you can, uh, you can see only overseers in the bit between. Is that a good thing? I, I don't know. But all is not as it was before. They seem tense on edge. Okay, that's a good thing. Investigate what's happening. An overseer runs up to where you stand by your locomotive. The revolution's over. The governor asked about you. He tries to say more, but needs to catch his breath. Finally, he's restored enough to continue. He seemed eager to see you, said to let him know if you docked, but maybe you should just head straight across, tell him yourself. The overseers aren't wearing their working capes. Their blazers, combined with the way some bob to you, make them seem very cheery. One holds open the door to Little Nice for you. It's a brief walk to the old governor's house. The door stands open unguarded. Witness negotiations. In the front room, behind the desk, is the reverberant activist. He has not seen you. In front of him, with their backs to you, are two men. Neither has removed their stovepipes. The advisory board was horrified to learn of conditions under the previous governor. Genuinely shocking. We are convinced that you are the person to right the ship. After all, who knows it better than you? The man takes out a sheet of paper and places it on the desk. You can't see what it says. The other stovepipe speaks. There are some practicalities that might mean progress is slower than you or I would like. Production must be kept up, of course. After all, that's what puts food on the table. But I'm sure you can find efficiencies your predecessors couldn't. We leave it in your hands, Governor. Both stovepipes chuckle warmly. 
They shake the hand of the new governor and leave, giving you a small nod as they pass. The new governor looks confounded. Whatever he expected, it was not this. Gained 25 strength of the sun. Huh. The new governor is meeting with representatives of London. Mm hmm. Yeah, the advisory board is horrified to learn of conditions under their previous governor. Yeah, bullshit. Perhaps this wasn't what you expected. Maybe you knew this was inevitable, but you've caught the revolutionary leader, the governor, by surprise. Congratulate the governor, or upbraid the governor. Upbraid the governor. The workers of Brabazon trusted him. They sacrificed their time for him, for him in the hope that he would save them. And now this. The governor meets your gaze, but says nothing. A gasp alerts you to the presence of the bearded youth. How long has he been standing behind you? With a gesture, the governor dismisses him. When the governor speaks again, his voice is low. If the furnaces die, so does Brabazon. The reality is I can only shuffle a few workers off the work world, but the rest would freeze. He smiles, bright, charming. I can make things better, at least. I can give them hope. He glances at the document on his desk. I won't be leaving. I have no use for this. Take it, please. Yeah. If the furnaces die, so does Brabazon. Good. Duh. I just got a royal dispensation. Holy shit. Huh. Progress of an uprising. An uprising has occurred. A new governor is in place. How much has changed? The workers are unhappy. They realize this isn't fair, but they cannot yet see the opportunities for change. 3,000 experience and a royal dispensation. Wow. But yeah, this is not a great result. Hmm. I wonder if there's something more I can do, or if this is kind of it. Which honestly, fair. Right? Like, what was I expecting? Come in and get everybody ready for a revolution, and then the revolution happens, and then everything's great and perfect? Like, how often does that happen? Poor report. Uh, recline on a bench. Things kind of seem back to normal here. Yeah, this whole description's the same. I wonder if I can speak with the leader again? You know, do the whole tour thing? Are they still doing tours? Mm, take the official shortcut to Brabazon Backstreets. Okay, that's nice. Listen to the work of the committee for the improvement of working conditions. Okay, so we can still try to do some stuff. Alright, good. I think I'm going to leave that for the next episode, though. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to see what more we can do to help the workers here at Brabazon Workworld, and I suppose level up.